Hey, what's up guys, Rev here. Today, I have a doozy for you all. A story about a VTuber who ruined his entire career in the span of roughly 24 hours. It was an event to behold. Watching a man get publicly crucified as he speed ran his way towards his own demise was something to behold. Today, we're talking about the VTuber Toastify, who is best described as, well, cringe. I mean, there's no other way of saying it. But unlike a lot of other VTubers that get canceled, there's no major bomb drop here. Like, he didn't murder anyone. Rather, it was like a death by a thousand cuts. Canceled by his embarrassing behavior over the past 48 hours, that also resurfaced a compilation of his most embarrassing previous controversies that he thought everyone had forgotten about. He went from a smug attitude mocking his current cancellation to a graduation post within hours. This tale involves everything from an AI-generated art scandal, to stealing emotes, to Andrew Tate, to our finale where he was humiliated on stream, an event that was followed by his deactivation. So that's enough foreplay. Let's talk about the rise and fall of the worst whale VTuber, Toastify. Now here's the ground zero of this controversy. It begins with this bold tweet where Toastify stated, AI art is cool, but cringe if you try to play it off as actual art. Hey, valid king. I mean, sure, don't post any AI generated art and pass it off as actual arts. That's something uh, that you should be made fun of for. It's, it's a bad thing to do. Hopefully Toastify never does that. He does. So literally within two days, Toastify posts this art piece and is quickly called out. Called out by fans, artists, and alike. He even hid replies calling him out. I mean, some of the biggest giveaways were the hands, which, by the way, if you're ever confused as to whether something is AI generated or not, the biggest giveaway is hands for some reason. They can't, the AI programs can't draw hands and feet for some reason. Little telltale signs like that are important to watch. But he doubled down. He doubled down on this whole thing. When someone asked him, who's the amazing artist who made this? He said, oh, I, I can't tag them. Uh, I got it off of Skeb. They don't have a Twitter account. Well, for those who don't know, Skeb is where you make commissions for artwork. There's almost no way that's true. And also you would have proof of the Skeb because it's a commission. You have to pay for it. There's going to be logs and receipts of all these things. So he could have shown that if someone was calling it out for being AI generated. So in the fallout of all this, you had posts like this absolutely crucifying him publicly for his AI-generated art controversy, but apparently Toastify's humiliation fetish was not satisfied yet, because on the 16th, he got cocky and decided to stream on Twitch with this announcement saying, got canceled, let's talk about it. Now actually, I was a viewer of the stream, I watched a good portion of it, and in that stream you had viewers and a lot of VTubers coming in and raising complaints about not only the AI generated art situation, which he continued to double down on by the way, but they also raised previous controversies Toastify had been, had been involved in over the past few months. The first one brought up was the Cloud9 controversy. It is a pretty prestigious streaming group and he put Cloud9 in his bio, something he even said he was gonna do in a stream from a few months ago, he put in his bio, pretended and was LARPing like he was a member of Cloud9 for absolutely no reason, something that was pointed out by an actual Cloud9 member like Vienna. And after that, another controversy from his past resurfaced, this time concerns that his emotes were stealing and tracing off of other VTubers like Bao, Vienna, and Shy Lily. And in this case, his defense was that he took these emotes from these other VTubers and was using them as a reference and that the artist is to blame for all this. Well, to be fair, yes. If you go to an artist with emotes from other VTubers and say, just trace this and make it in my VTuber, that's on the artist. Part of it is. But there is responsibility on the person making the commission because they should know better. They're instructing someone to trace over artwork of other people. And in that controversy, he got a lot of blowback and eventually went private and kind of hid for a bit. But unfortunately, the internet never forgets. Which leads us into the next controversy, which is maybe not necessary, but it's just more funny to show you what the kind of guy this is. 
Uh, he's he's a bit of a fan of Andrew Tate. Um, there are Discord messages shared where he's praising him, saying that he's funny, charismatic, and smart, and that he's hatching a breeding ground for future generations to be immune of social consequences because that's what he believes in. I, ladies and gentlemen, I just spotted a Sigma male. We got some Sigma male activity here. Yeah, I'm sorry. Speaking as a man, it is very unfortunate that there's not more role models on the internet for young men. But I will tell you this, Andrew Tate is not one of them. He is a man who has been accused of sex trafficking minors. He is just a terrible, cringy, embarrassing person. And anyone who's sympathizing with him straight straight geek behavior dude like this is this is embarrassing i mean but hey you know maybe i'm just a beta maybe i'm just a beta male i don't understand i don't understand the sigma grind set but hey that's that's his thing and one final previous controversy i want to i want to bring up is it was brought up in the stream and it was brought up in previous tweets and current tweets is that he did a lot of follow back scams where he would bait people for follows especially other vtubers and then the second they fall back he would unfollow them Basically to preserve his ratio on Twitter. And for those who don't know, basically like your ratio is like your your number of followers versus the number of people you're following. So like the the bigger disparity there is, the more cool you look, I guess, which is like like bro, you're not Kanye. Like relax, okay? Like but that I, I just thought it was necessary to add and it, it, that sort of follow back scam got him a really bad reputation in the VTuber community and really just rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. So nobody's really sympathizing with him right from the get-go. So it's pretty clear that this stream did not go the way he thought it would, and it led to this twit longer apology he posted on Twitter, where he apologized for the use of AI-generated art, which he claimed was just for fun. And he panicked when he was called out, and he felt pressured to continue the lies once he was called out. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the victim arc. Yeah, here's the problem. You can't make a call-out post saying it's wrong to disguise AI-generated art as real art and then do that exact same thing two days later and then lie about it the second you're called out. Yeah, you're the victim. You're the victim of your own stupidity. And perhaps unsurprisingly, his twit longer apology was roasted and dragged all across Twitter. Everyone was making fun of it from just random Twitter users to a whole host of VTubers. And of course, not long after that, we got the graduation announcement where he stated, Hey guys, all good things come to an end. So I'll be doing a graduation stream on October 25th at 3 p.m. EST. Heart emoji. So again, people are like, wow. The downfall. It couldn't get any more embarrassing than that. In the course of roughly 24 hours, this man completely humiliated himself to the point of graduation. A story we've seen many times, but it's still funny. It can't get any worse, right? Oh. Enter the VTuber Sens. This man went into a call. It was apparently uh, one of Toastify's friends. Toastify was in the, in the call on stream and this VTuber named Sens comes in and has a discussion with those two men. And let me just put it to you this way. It was both beautiful and painful to watch. Watching, his friend got roasted too, but watching Toastify just get humiliated for an entire stream. Like, like I said, there's got to be like a humiliation kink or something. Like, I don't know how this man stayed on stream and stayed in the Discord call. Because he was getting scolded like a little child. Put on full blast for all the things he's done wrong. And he didn't have a single answer for anything he was being criticized for. It was, at some point, in front of nearly 400 people were watching the stream. It was being like, live broadcasted on Twitter. People were like tweeting it as it was happening. It was to the point of Toastify trending on Twitter, okay? It was so bad and so humiliating that perhaps it was unsurprising when Toastify finally deactivated shortly after. So now it looks like we've reached the conclusion of this epic tale, the story of Toastify 
his quick rise and fall. But what is the takeaway from all this? Well, for one, don't lie. Don't be a hypocrite. And don't double down when you've been completely exposed. I think a lot of the things he did, he could have just apologized for and people would have forgotten. But the fact that he was so cocky and that he doubled down on everything and just had this smug attitude all the way till the end until, well, the walls came closing in and it made the fall even more hilarious to watch. Now, I will address something. Word on the street is that he already is up and running on another account. He has a history of buying accounts and also buying followers. And while I can't 100% confirm it's him, I'm pretty sure there's an account that's in his name already. But I'm not doing a free shout out and this whole legacy of his is going to follow him no matter where he goes and rightfully so. But that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the rise and fall of Toastify. And yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below and I'll see you guys next time.